Uh, something right here. Uh, what do you want me to do, right? You know? And so a few cars left the shop wrong. So just FYI. Again, it all just ro rolls back to you've got to be on some kind of either all data or OEM one stop or the other systems that are out there to be able to look up these procedures and not just arbitrarily think you know what you're doing, right? Fixturing systems, we talked about that already. All I can tell you about what, what I will tell you about fixturing systems is, is that honestly, I think all of our cars are going this way, just so you know. Um, I, the, the, the days of having three mils of tolerant or is, is, is about to go away. Mercedes and BMW and the other Highline cars already don't have uh, any tolerance at all. It's supposed to be brought back to zero. The only cars out there that have tolerances built into them are the American-made cars. And those American-made cars are about to start going to zero. So that tolerance piece is going to go away. And when the tolerance goes away, I think you're going to start seeing everybody go to fixtures, by the way. Because fixtures force you to put the car back to square, right? So I know Spinezi's already switched over to fixture. Select is fi fixture. Um, I don't think Chief will ever change. And I don't know what car is going to do, right? But, um, so, huh? Carl Landers one picture? Yeah. I wouldn't be shocked because right now they spend an ass load of money making clamps everywhere. And if they go to fixture, it's not going to be near as much of a, of a deal. So, steel inserts and aluminum tie bar, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. But what I will tell you is, if I can get back there, is what happens when you put steel and aluminum together on a normal basis? Corrosion, right? Right, yeah, corrodes, right? So normally in the body shop world, we would never think about putting steel and aluminum on each other. But this S-Class Mercedes is actually built this way. With this aluminum, uh, what is that, an upper rail? I don't know. Anyway, that's aluminum, and the bracket that is riveted to it is steel. The reason why it doesn't corrode is because the rivets have a special coating around them. Those rivets are only supposed to be used one time never ever to be used again. Again, minor thing, but if you replace this bracket and you don't replace the rivets, it is going to fail at some point in time. And again, it's just knowing what you're dealing with, making sure you bill accordingly and do it the right way so you don't come back and have to eat it later. How are we doing on time? Ten two. Ten two. Okay. Not gonna talk about that. This is interesting, though. This car is, is dead, obviously. Sorry, but, um, so, have y'all ever heard of Foreman Pierce? I hadn't either, just to be honest with you. I've never heard of Foreman Pierce in my life up until maybe eight years ago. And of course, like I said, this car is dead. But it's pretty interesting. So, uniform gaps right from the upper rail to that fender, would you agree? Yes? Go to the other side, and I've got a half an inch difference, right? Note the fender to apron fit on the left front side. So just so you know, my techs would have looked at that and said, boss, I'm this freaking bed, man. We better start pulling on this thing. You know what I mean? What I'm going to tell you is the car's built that way. From the factory. It's off. Or we say it's off. Foreman Pierce is, is that the structure of the car is built, then they take the front clip, and they put it where it lines up the best and they drill the holes and slam it down. That's it. They're done. So it's not going to necessarily be uniform from side to side. Right? My point again, I know we're not fixing any of these, is, is that if you just pop the hood and you don't use any kind of uh, system to go look up the data or you don't measure with a system and you just pop the hood, most technicians are going to say, man, something's been. We, we're swung over. We're going to have to set it up and pull this thing back. We'll be, you'll be pulling a car that's actually not been. What right. cars are those, though? Huh? What cars are those? You that's a, it's a Pontiac Sunfire. So like I said, Pontiac doesn't even exist anymore. I just thought it was interesting, right? And tomorrow, what are we going to see? Who knows, right? But again, it just goes back to you cannot have the attitude that I've been doing this for a long time and I know what I'm doing. You see what I mean? That's not, that doesn't work anymore. That worked 20 years ago. It doesn't hold any water now, right? You know, it just doesn't. So, suicide doors could be next, right? They used to be here. Now they're coming.
coming back. Um, the high performing process, yeah, you know, there are still vehicles out there that use high performed rails. Corvettes are one of them. Um, and the Dodge does it on, I think all their trucks are high performed uh, rails. High performing is really just, they take a big ass block of freaking steel and they run water through it at an unbelievable PSI that cuts that rail exactly how they want, how they need it formed uh, with water. It's kind of crazy, right? That water can have that kind of a, uh, impact, right? Oh, here's what I, I, I'm telling you, back to that whole thing, I wish they built cars this way, right? Wouldn't that be cool? The car comes in, you take it apart, and you're like, and for your technicians, hey, dumbass, right here's where you put it in, right? And this piece is bent, right? Wouldn't that be great? Oh, I love that if they built cars that way. It would be so, so much nicer, right? They do this stuff at trade shows for us so we can see it, but they don't build them like that so we can see it. But wouldn't it be great, Phil, if you pop the hood and it says, hey, section it right here. That's where it goes. Yeah. Um, all these are just, again, uh, you know, the service part cut line is stamped on the original, you know, frame, right? Knowing where you, where the OE and the engineers who built the car say that you can cut, splice, or put something in. That's the message, right? Don't think that you know better than them, right? Here's that replacement uh, part, but here it's showing you exactly where it goes in and how it goes in. There's that high-performed rail. Again, all of those slides are just all the different substrates and different things always do to build them. The thing that we've got to do is make sure we know what it is that we're working with and how we can uh, get the result that we need. Kink versus Ben, real quick, I'll do this and then we'll take a quick break and then we'll wrap this thing up and go drink beer. Does that sound like Okay. So Kink versus Ben, all I want to tell you on Kink versus Ben, I'm pretty sure there's probably two pages of crap in there. Here's what I'm going to tell you on Kink versus Ben. Whatever you were told about Kink versus Ben as you grew up in this industry means absolutely nothing now. When I grew up in this industry, Kink meant what? I got to replace it, right? Ben, oh, I know where you're going. Ben, when, ben meant what? That you could repair it. It was that was our simple thought process because that's what Grandpa told me. Kink, I replace it. Bend, I repair it. Right? Okay. None of that is is valid anymore. Um, right now, if you look at the OE, they will tell you that in some cases you can repair a kink depending on where that kink is. You know, and what's next to it, and where structurally where it is. And adversely, just because there's a bend does not mean that it can be repaired. Sometimes the bend will require the replacement of a rail or any kind of structure piece depending on where that damage is, right? So the old kink versus bend rule means zero. Forget it. Don't, don't, don't even get into it. Okay, let's take a break and um, then we'll come and I'll leave us here. And then we'll finish. We'll run hard till the end, and then we'll go do the drink beer. Oh. So they say to the
issues. They said that they had no issues with them. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know where they saw it. Okay. But yeah, I think he sprayed it out to show them. I think. But as long as they approve it, that's all right. Yeah. I already picked it up right now. It was supposed to pick it up yesterday, but the guy didn't have a flat there because oh, they have some, right. yeah, they have some deal where if it brings past 22 miles, they have to pay back a thousand for every mile or whatever. So the dealership. Oh, so, so it has to go with the truck. Yeah. It has to go. Oh, yeah, because I think they came in because, at 19. Oh, gosh. Yeah. 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 That's the flat right there. Didn't John get a flat back? Yeah. 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 It's nice though. Yeah, I saw the bright light of that. Yeah. One of going to drive. You probably. <laughs> hey, man, you ain't lying. I've been doing everything. I'm everywhere. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's not good. I just get the experience, man. They say that that's what, uh, what like, I'm not an New England fan. So yeah. Bill Bellick just said, the more you can do, it's harder to get ready. Exactly. 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 I got my hands in everything. I'd love to see you doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the most organized piece of the puzzle y'all got. I'll, I'll fight for Dusa, okay? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's why I see you. Got little, you, got, you got to step away from the box. Who's who's? Who's handling all the, uh, dealing at the counter right now? Yeah. yeah. But it's Tuesday. Tuesdays are more like... Yeah, still the beginning of the week. And... Yeah. Yesterday was pretty busy. It was just like... Kind of going... Back here. People, the, the rental cars are coming back? Or just busy for the shop? No, for the shop. Oh, that's good. Right. 
how much freight would you get door rate wise? Right? Because that's oh, what, I'm what, what is his percentage charging door rate? rate? Okay, yeah. So if he's charging invoice. What's your door rate? What are the tips? 36. 36. Yeah, but he does a lot of DRP work. Oh, you're right. Because DRP is paying more Right. So does that, if you divided it by the hour, we need by to see, hours, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see how much his labor rate That's a good question. And you know what? He has that input. Because we, if it's we, like <laughs> five, six bucks more we, per hour, then yeah. Five we, need, we need to go see him one day. We'll go to lunch and go see him. We'll see you for nine o'clock now. Have you ever been to a place called uh, Tulips? Tulips? Oh, across the street. You go there? I never been there. Oh, where is that? How do you go there? Oh, you walk in the doors. Do, do what? Oh, to watch the girl. Okay. <laughs>